I am a man, I am speaking like a man. Not I mean to say by voice, but my personal gestures. If I start saying something like this, you know, the feminine way, so that is, I am trying, the women have got their own way, so they, they speak like that. So this, this what Allah said that, that you import on them masculine manners. The masculine manners to import the masculinity. What is the masculinity? So in the world there are many, many in the cultures, in the societies, there are different opinions about the masculinity. One is an average scientific factual masculinity and femininity, which is by, by God given. But there are certain things that we and men and women both use for men that what kind of a man are you? So I will have a, this now at this moment I will read a comparative aspect of the Bible according to the Good News Bible of Jews and Christian faith. This is to be a faith of the Jews and the Christian because they believe this to be their book. They are trying to follow this book. And if you look into the context, the text in it, the sense and the message in it, which I'm going to read now, it is addressed as a masculine behavior. Is it? As a masculine behavior. Not only there are many behaviors, but I'm just giving you the, uh, the verses where it describes the masculine behavior. For example, in Matthew 23, verse 33, Jesus is supposed to be addressing to his audience. Like I opened this talk of mine by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings and mercy of Allah to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. But in the Bible, Jesus said, You snakes, you snakes, and sons of snakes. Why is he saying it? Because he's a masculine. He's showing masculinity. You hypocrites. And in Matthew 12, verse 39. How evil and godless are the people of this day. Luke 12 verse 51. Do you suppose that I came to bring peace to the world? No, not peace, but divisions. This is the masculine behavior of a dictator. I, Luke 12 49, I came to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already kindled. I have come in this world to create fire on the earth by bombs. Eh? By bombs and killing fire on the earth. And I wish it were already kindled. This is my masculinity according to the Bible. And further in Numbers 31, 17 and 18. Now, so now, kill every boy and kill every woman who has had sexual intercourse, but keep, keep alive for yourselves all the girls and all the women who are virgins. Look at the masculine character. Kill every boy, every girl who are adulterous or fornicators, but keep alive the virgins for us to serve. And keep alive the virgins. And further, if you look at the, in Levit Levitus 25, word 46, and you may leave them these women, virgins, as an inheritance, inheritance to your sons, whom they must serve as long as they live. First of all, any girl or any boy who has sexual intercourse in the world, you just kill them. And the virgin girls, you keep for yourself, enjoy them, and after, when you are dying, leave, leave them back, uh, behind to your sons, that after that they can use them. Look at the masculine behavior. Women are like, these are the things that the Christian world and the girls of the Christianity are against the men. They should be against that these are the masculine character of the Satan, not Allah, not Jesus. This is the character or the personality behavior of a shaitan, the devil. It can never be the word of Jesus or Allah at all. You understand this? This is going on. And further, next page. 1 Corinthians 14 verse, 14 chapter 34 to 35 verse. The women should keep quiet in the meetings. They are not allowed to speak. As the Jewish law says, they must not be in charge. If, if they want to find out about something, they should ask their husbands at home. It is a disgraceful thing for a woman to speak in the church. Shut up.
No woman can speak. This is the masculine character or the behavior of the shaitan. That the women have no right to speak. Shut up. No prime ministers know, know this. Just be quiet in a church. This has been a masculine behavior of the Bible. And this is the behavior of the Satan. In Luke 14, 26. Whoever comes to me cannot be my disciple unless he loves me more than he loves his father and his mother, his wife and his children, his brothers and sisters and himself as well. And believe me what I read, there are millions and billions of the people who have been, been the victim of this kind of behavior. They have given their lives. They didn't bother about their wives. They didn't bother about children. They did give their lives for these dictators. They have given their lives. They loved more that man, that evil, the devil, that they gave their lives for him. Not for Allah. Not for Allah. But because of this dictator who have dictated these terms in the world. And further he said, now in Luke 19, 27 verse, now as for, the, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and kill them in my presence. This is supposed to be Jesus saying it, which I don't believe, but this is what it says in the Bible. As for those my enemies, now if people, if I'm a dictator and I'm influencing people according to my philosophy, and if there are people who are not agreeing to my philosophy, who are my enemies, here, this is the masculine manner of the world. Come, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Kill. If they are not going to accept me as their king, the leader, bring them here and kill them. This is the masculine manner of the devil, the shaitan. So now this, this, this was the, again I come to back to Surah Al-Asra 17, 64. So I, I just explained two words. What's this? Manis tata'ata minhum bisawtika Three things we have discussed that you can stir up or excite with your voice whoever is obedient from them and import on them with your thought, your school of thought and import on them your masculine manners. This we have discussed how the masculine manners are being imported, how the, uh, uh, the, with the, the sound there is, is Satan is misguiding and the third comes and be their partner in wealth and children and promise them and promise them and shaitan promises them nothing except delusion. Now the, the fourth point aspect is to be a partner in wealth and children. Now you see in men and women Allah says that you can have love and affection for your children. This is a natural course but listen you must have a limitations for your love for your children and if you surpass that law for your children you start doing wrong acts for your love of money you start doing acts wrong you are becoming a partner of the shaitan the devil you see you understand what i'm saying because you say i am uh, what i did in my life i only serve my children what did you do in life i always were working for money my, my life, I always try to have money in my life. My main object is to have money, too much amount of money. <laughs> what about, what, what, what are we going to do with that all money? And what about the children and love and affection? That, because your whole, liva, whole life is revolve, revolving around money or children. So why are we? Because the shaitan is becoming a partner. He becomes a partner. Look, you are my, I'm your shareholder. You have to do it. So remember, you must have a limitations of your love for children you must have a love uh, limitations of your love for your wealth there is a limitation to all your, all your love for your children because because of the children you do you can commit many wrong acts against god you can go very easily and then the other thing aspect is your wealth so allah said we have given you wealth and in one of the eyes wealth and children for your trial for your captivation fascination and captivation so you are captivated from for, from wealth you are captivated from the children and you surpass the law of god and then you become a partner to the shaitan and allah says shaitan promises them 
he gives promises you you do this it, it will benefit you you have to become a partner you it will benefit you and unless the shaitan promise you nothing except delusion al asra 17 and ayah 65 inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan wa kafa bi rabbika wakila surely my servants over them you will never have any authority and sufficient advocate is with your lord meaning allah said my servants who are mukhlis to allah these these uh, your this uh, all this uh, stirring up with your feelings and sound everything he, they they know and they believe in the allah's ayas you will have no authority on them you will have no authority on them and allah is is enough to take uh, enough to kafa uh, bi is an enough to be a, an advocate so what i'm trying in this little verse there's a small message that the only who are obedient to shaitan he has got the authority and who are mukhlis to allah who are sincere dedication to allah's message the shaitan has no authority over you surah al araf 7 and ayah 16 qala fa bima aghwaytani la aqudanna lahum siratak al mustaqim he says so with what you have tempted me definitely i will sit on your straight path for them Now, this word, uh, the word "aghwaytani" means you have tempted me. It means you, Allah. Shaitan is saying to Allah that you have tempted me, so I will definitely sit for the people on your straight path. Now, the the the, uh, the important point is that I I I I always speak, try to speak with uh, all types of people, and sometimes. I had a discussion with a person who is using as an argument this verse trying to emphasize me a point that it is God tempted the shaitan God tempted the shaitan this is a basically an allegation on Allah qala fa bima aghwaytani he said ho the shaitan said he said so with what you that is referring to God capital you have tempted me definitely i will sit on your means allah straight path for the people for them so actually this is a statement of the shaitan to allah that you have tempted me you have tempted me allah didn't say i have tempted the shaitan you see it is not like this first of all this should be clear it is not allah saying that i have tempted the shaitan it is shaitan saying to allah Then secondly, <clears throat> and then he says, "Qala fa bima aghwaytay la qudanna lahum siratak al mustaqis." So he said, "With what you have tempted me, definitely I will sit on your straight path for for them." The second aspect is first he puts a charge on Allah that you tempted me. Then he says, "Definitely I will sit on your straight path." And we all know the straight path is the Quran. the straight path is the quran and the understanding of the quran or understanding of the uh, of the message of allah's message that is the straight path you will come to know the straight path even you come to know the devil or the shaitan from the quran so he is sitting on the straight path what for he is not taking guidance he is sitting on the straight path for people because people want to know the, the in the psyche built in Uh, they like like there is love in our psyche there are uh, hatred is when emotions are in our psyche from the childhood and intelligence in our psyche and same there is a part of religion in our psyche we are born with a religion the true religion in our psyche so now he knows this and he says that uh, i will sit on your straight path everybody will be coming to know what is truth and reality about islam about god or about anything religion so he said i will tell you come to me is sitting on the straight path and you went there and you said look i want to know uh, 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 this and this and what should i do any problem men and women facing in the world you go to spiritual people they tell you what not allah's message allah's ayas or the essence related to your life they tell you something which is not related to your life and you start believing it and practicing it so he's sitting on the straight path he will not let the masses of the world so called liberal muslims or the uh, not muslims 
not to know the essence of the message or the sense of the Quran. So now he says in further ayat, Surah Al-Af 7, ayah 17, ثُمَّ لَا آتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَخْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Then definitely I will come to them from their front and from their behind and about their right and about their left and you will not find the majority of them thankful. Now he says, I will come to them from the front and from the behind. He's coming from the front, he's coming from the behind and he will tell me about the right. He will tell me about the left. And you will see Allah, he says, Shaitan says, you will, he's telling Allah, you will not find majority of them thankful. Now every day, we are leading a life from every day or every moment of, at this moment and every moment, we are leading a life. In our life cycle, we have to take decisions in life. And in that decision, shaitan is always there. This is, there's a problem, there's an issue in our life. So he's telling me, the shaitan is telling me, you did this wrong, you will get the benefit. Don't do right. So that situation is coming from front. You understand what I'm saying? Any situation you come into in your practical life, which is you are intending to plan a particular thing from present continuous, from present tense to continue you're going ahead of life and some situations are coming in your life, you have to take decisions. And the moment you make a decision, you that shaitan is coming from the front, giving you advice in, in the, that decision that you have to do this and you have not to do this. So if you take up a decision on, on shaitanic principle, so you have to, you are following the footsteps of the khutubat shaitan. So now it, he has come from the front. And once you have committed this wrong act by the shaitan, he's done it to you, it goes in your psyche, it becomes a part of your psyche. And once it becomes your part of psyche, it reoccurs in your mind, look, you have done such a something, that thing at that time wrong. It reoccurs, consciousness, awareness, I did wrong. So what now I want to amend, so what I do in my past, I go, if at that time, if I would have not slapped him, so I would have said sorry, you know, but actually I've slapped. This is a fact. So I will try to go in my psyche, recycle that incidence and try to hold my slap. But again, I'll see that I'm slapping. This reoccurrences will be continuous. If you are, this is uh, stuck up in your uh, act. You will not amend by saying sorry to God Almighty, fasting for three days and start amending. That is the correction. But if you do not do correction, you will go in your psyche, go in your past, you think about the psyche, what did I do wrong? And then you try to recycle, I mean, reoccur those whole uh, film, like going, you rewind it, you know, that incident, you rewind it, and before hitting the slapping, that person, you come to a situation, and you try to control, I didn't say, I said sorry. But you, in a flash of mind, again, mind says, no, you slapped, it is there, he's recorded. So you, you can't help it. So what is the amendment? You say sorry and you amend. So that is coming from the behind. That ill and hurts, he's coming from your behind. Whenever he comes from the future, means when you're leading a life, you have to take decision, you must take a decision according to the situation of Anaya. And once you do not take a decision on Anaya, you do, do the, uh, take the decision on the Shaitan, it becomes a part of yourself, it goes in your, it goes in your behind, behind your psyche. And whenever a situation comes, some related situation, it comes in your mind, it comes in front of you, it comes from behind. The shaitan, you have done this and this thing, you have this and that, these are the ills and the hurts you have. So these ills and the hurts are brought forward. Again, you can't say, I can't do this because I've done so many crimes. And the third is you about the right and about the right, left. What is right? You see, there are many things, if I say in this audience or wherever this lecture has been heard, if I say so many, you will say it is right. But this right is not based on Allah's message. This right is a right established in the world by the devil. How? He says, you must pray. You try to make a habit of praying five times a day. Make it a habit. Okay, is it wrong? Is it right? Make a habit of faith to offer, establish that five times a day. But when you ever, whenever you try to establish the prayer, you must not understand the essence 
of the message that you read in that namaz or prayer. Not necessary to understand the message of the Quranic ayat that you read in the prayer. Not necessary. But keep on praying whether you understand or you don't understand. Allah understands. Allah knows my heart that I cannot understand what I am saying to you God. But he knows me that he understands what I say in Arabic. He understands the Arabic language. So this is how established apparently right is not right. It looks to be right. But it is not right if you pray and don't understand anything of the essence of the message. It is not right. But it has become a right. You read a Quran. From the childhood you read in the Quran in Arabic. Reading Quran is wrong. Am I wrong? I read Quran every day. I hear a separa. I am reading before I go to office. Every day after Fajr prayer, I read one separa. Okay? Is it wrong to read a Quran? Whether I don't understand. Whether I don't understand. At least I am reading it. I am thousands better of those guys who are not reading it. At least I sit and read every day. Again, who told you this? What I am trying to convey, this is right. It is established fact. People are practicing it. And they think they are doing right. So whatever the right is, it is he is telling you all this. So this is how people become rightist. So called religious people, they believe to be doing right, but they are not actually right. And the other people who are against religion, they are leftist. This is how leftist became. But the both are di di driven by, God, by, by devil. Both are both. The rightist people are following something is an attribute or is the psyche given by the devil. And the leftist people are following something that is also given by the devil. The leftist people are also inspired by the devil, governed by the devil and the rightist. They think they are doing right, but that is not right. So in other words, when people say, well, most of the things we already know what is in the Quran. No, 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 no. What you know is what the devil has told you. So I can tell you many, many things you think it is right, but it is not true in the eyes of God. So now in Surah Al-Hijr 15 and Ayah 13 and 39 he said, O oh my Lord, with what you have tempted me, definitely I will decorate in the earth for them and tempt them together. Accept your sincere servants for, from them. Again, he is using this word that, O oh Allah, you tempted me, putting this blame. Again, I would like to have now a small comparison before I go ahead. Genesis 22 verse 1 God tempted Abraham now in the Bible it is Astaghfirullah God tempted Abraham Shaitan says you God tempted me it is a, a, a charge on Allah that you tempted me but the Bible said that he tempted Abraham Astaghfirullah Meaning God himself is confessing that I have this tempted Abraham. And another place, Jeremiah 20 verse 7. Jeremiah says, O God, you have deceived me. And in Mark 13 verse 1, Jesus was tempted by the Satan for 40 days. So in the Bible, it is God Almighty doing all this. In the Bible, it is the Satan, the devil is is putting a false charge on Allah. I just wanted to tell you this. Now we come to back to the verse. Definitely I will decorate in the earth for them and tempt them together. Decorate the earth. Anyway, this decoration and then you see this is, it says Wala, Wala majmain, and I will tempt them all together. The shaitan is also tempting in masses. You see the Wala ugviyannahum ajma'een I will tempt them all together. So ever, ever, many majority of the people, if people start falling in the majority, if he's recognized in the world by, 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 by media or by anything, people start believing in that person and think it's right. They are not interested in knowing the truth. They are interested in the tempting, tempting of the shaitan together. Illa ibadaka minumul mukhlasin. Accept your sincere servants from them. Definitely, I will de decorate in the earth and for them and tempt them together. So, togetherness of big crowd is also 
that is a temptation for the devil to tempt these people in crowds, in, in groups, in majority of people together, all together, not one by one. That's the important point. And further, in Surah Nisa 4 and Ayah 119, وَلَا أُذِلَّنَّهُمْ وَلَا أُمَنِّيَنَّهُمْ وَلَا آمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلَا يُبَتِّكُنَّ آذَانَ الْأَنْعَامِ وَلَا آمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلَا يُغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَّغِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيَّ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا I will lead them astray, I will make them wishful, and I will order them so definitely they will cut off the ears of the cattle, and I will order them so definitely they will alter the creation of Allah, and who takes the shaitan, the Satan, a protector from other than Allah, then without doubt, he is at a loss, a clear, clear loss. I will lead them astray. I will make them wishful. Now, the shaitan, the, another, these are all the acts you are listening, what shaitan is saying, all these ayahs that I have read. Here he is saying, I will lead them astray from the straight path. He is sitting on the straight path and he will astray from the straight path. We have read the previous ayah that he is sitting on the straight path for, for the people. And he is astraying people from the straight path. And I will make them wishful. What is a wish? Everything which you want to wish, which you may not have the means and the capacity to achieve by a logical process, you are wishing for that. Anything which you don't have the capacity or the means to achieve, you can't achieve everything in the world. There are things that are achievable in your capacity because you have the means to work on it. That you can do. But that which is beyond your capacity, which is beyond, then you start, if you have that wish, full thinking. So people had, had this kind of uh, fulfilled because they, they know everybody has got a wish. Not one wish, many, many wish. Hazaro khwai shayasi. Hazaro, hundreds of wishes. So they are wishing well, and they are wishing so and so, they are wishing so and so, so. I don't know, there are many, many th situations that you can wish. And everybody will lightly take a chance. Why not? What's wrong in it? Take a chance. You wish. Maybe at this moment, wish will happen. You understand what I'm saying? So this is how the shaitan is saying, make you wishful. All the time you are leading a life on your wishes and desires. Not a logical process of or the capability to achieve a certain situation. If there is a certain situation, you can achieve that, you can work on it, you can achieve it. But if you are not working on anything, but you are just wishing to have this thing, a wishful thinking is basically, again, the satan is doing it, making you wishful all the time. Then he says, I will order them, so they will definitely cut off the ears of the cattle. It's an idiomatic words, idiomatic uh, expression. expression. And how, the, if you, the, the, the cattle doesn't understand anything, and Allah says that you are cutting the, they are cut the, uh, the shaitan says, I will cut the, uh, I'll order them to cut the ears of a cattle, means people will not listen to the message of God, like the cattle, they can understand. Even the cattle will get, if the sound is cattle also get disturbed by, by the sound. But you are not even disturbed by the sound. The, ear, the cutting of the uh, ears of the cattle. Maybe we are listening to a talk of the message of the essence of Allah and our ears are so much tuned. The sound is also there, the voices are there, the message is there, the language is there. But our ears, the catalog, we are sitting in our room. Not listening to the message. That is cutting of the ears of the cattle. And I will order them so definitely they will alter the creation of Allah. Now, what is a creation? One is the creation that we are to serve God. If we are not serving God in the true sense, then we are the, under the influence of the shaitan. His order ordering us to not to serve God. Number one, alter the creation. Number, the creation was to serve God. The creation Allah has created us to serve God. But if you are not serving that, Allah, shaitan is altering to uh, serve God. The other alteration is, Allah has made me a man, 